Hello, my name is Reed Redden, and I'm a sheep and goat specialist for Texas A&M AgriLife Extension. Um, it's early March here in Texas, and we've had a bit of a cold snap, and we've been getting a lot of questions and concerns from the ranching community and others about how cold is too cold for sheep and goats to be out on pasture and exposed to the elements. And that's not a, a real simple question to answer, so we're going to go over some of the facts of what, uh, what influences cold stress in sheep and goats. So, there's three things um, that are involved with cold stress. The first, which is the one that we always kind of think of first, is temperature. Right now it's just below freezing, uh, but if you kind of look in the background, you can notice that the goats, I don't know if you can see them or not well, but the goats are pretty comfortable. They're, they're not really shivering, they're not huddled up. So why is that? Uh, it's below freezing. And that's because these sheep and goats have a thermal neutral zone where they don't feel uncomfortable until temperatures get just below freezing or maybe a bit colder. Yesterday, it was a little bit warmer, but there was one thing that was going on yesterday uh, that, that influenced it, and that was wind. Yesterday, about this time of day, it was about 30 degrees, a few degrees warmer than it is now, but there was about a 20 mile an hour wind. And so that wind really influences how cold they feel. And so it felt more like 10 degrees because we had a 10 mile an hour wind. Uh, as such, we make sure that these goats have adequate uh, wind protection so they can get behind a barn where they're getting blocked from that northerly wind. The third thing, the third environmental thing that influences cold stress is moisture. And this is probably the most important. So when animals get wet, um, they really start losing, they have a real high rate of heat loss. And that's because water conducts uh, heat. And so they start losing body heat at a much, much higher rate. And cold stress really uh, factors in, especially if you have all three. So if you have a cold, heavy rain, uh, more than around a half an inch. Most sheep and goats, when they have uh, a winter coat on them, are able to shed a quarter to a half inch of rain, depending on how fast it comes, um, and it doesn't get down on their skin. But when we have a cold, soaking rain with high winds and low temperatures, that's whenever we get really acute cold stress in sheep and goats, and we need to make sure that we provide them adequate protection uh, from those elements. But then not all sheep and goats are equal and experience cold stress the same. Um, there's three different classes that are most vulnerable to cold stress. The first is thin conditioned animals, animals that are below a body condition score of three. And so if you walk through this goats behind us, you will notice that are, there are a couple that are huddled up and are chilled. And those are ones that got ill that are a little bit under conditioned. And those are the ones that need the most protection and need the most extra feed. So if an animal is below its thermal neutral zone, we recommend a quarter pound of additional high quality feed per 10 degrees below their thermal neutral zone. So these animals that live out in these elements, they've had time to put on a bit of a winter coat. Um, their lower critical temperature is probably around freezing. And so if we're, if we're 20 degrees below that, we would need to supplement a half pound of a, a pelleted feed or something that's real high quality. They're able to use that for body heat. These thin conditioned animals, that fat helps them insulate so they don't lose as much heat. Plus they can mobilize that fat uh, so they can rapidly uh, keep their body temperatures up. Our next most vulnerable class is newborns. Um, if we think as humans, we spend most of our lives in 65 to 75 degrees inside. So when we come out and it's cold, we feel very cold. Uh, but these animals, they spend most of their life outside and so that's why their thermal neutral zone is low. But newborns, they are like us. They spent the last few months in a really uh, a warm environment of almost 101 degrees. And then if they're born on a morning like this, that's a 70 degree drop in temperature. So uh, they do get stressed. Luckily, they're born with brown fat, which is the special kind of fat that they can mobilize really quickly and maintain um, their body temperature up for uh, for their first few hours of life. And hopefully um, they're healthy, their mom's in good condition, they get up, they nurse, they get that first colostrum in, and that colostrum is a rich um, fat, uh, a rich fatty uh, milk that helps them keep their body temperatures up. So if they eat adequate colostrum, they can maintain body heat and do pretty good even at these same uh, freezing type temperatures, as long as you can keep them out of the, out of the wind. 
And our last um, more vulnerable class of animals is freshly shorn animals. So if you think about um, a wool sheep or an angora or goat, they've developed this coat and their body is adjusted to having a coat on. We take that coat off one day and then they're much more vulnerable. Their lower critical temperatures probably in the neighborhood of 50 to 70 degrees, depending on how their body is adjusted to what the external temperatures have been, you know, in the recent few weeks or months before they were shorn. And so those animals need adequate protection from wind, rain, a little bit of extra feed um, so that their bodies can adjust. Uh, and we need to provide that ad adequate protection for seven to 14 days so that their skin can harden up, they can develop a crust on the outside and better maintain their body temperature. So hopefully this helps you um, as you make management decisions on how to deal with animals who may be experiencing some acute or chronic cold stress.